Hi guys, welcome back to Snakes and Adders Reptile Advice, episode 48 across Facebook and YouTube. Today we're going to talk about cohabitation. Cohabitation is a high risk technique and not something that should be attempted by beginners. I will qualify all of these statements later on, but it is just important to know that cohabitation has serious connotations to both the keeper and the animals being kept, and it is important that we cover it thoroughly and conscientiously regarding the animals. It's not something we can just throw out there. So, what is cohabitation? Cohabitation is you keeping more than one animal in a tank. That will either take the form of a pair, a boy and a girl, or a group of females, or a harem of females and a single male, and when this is the same species, this is called keeping conspecifics. If you're going to keep multi-specific tanks, which means different species of animals, and then the different sexes as well, things can become slightly more complex. So what are the considerations or the possible uh, pitfalls and cock-ups? You see, the thing is you can do your own research regarding the species kept to see whether this is applicable or not. But the theorem, the actual, the, the practice and theory of cohabitation, we can look at as, as, a, as a broader subject. So... The upshot is we know that animals develop hierarchies and that isn't reserved just for reptiles, that could be for mammals, for, for anything else and we're going to have this hierarchical nature within a vivarium. Take for example many lizards, whether they be chameleons, anolis lizards, whatever, you will have an alpha male that will take the top perch. He therefore has the prime basking side. The thermoregulation possibilities of the other animals could then be hampered or they run the risk of agitation and confrontation behaviour from the alpha male on his perch underneath the light with the best basking grounds. So therefore we need an enclosure that's large enough to be able to provide multiple basking sites for animals so that there isn't competition over resources. This therefore takes experience as well simply because it's hard enough getting one tank to run right with one set of parameters for basking for cooling down and the thermoregulation and the shuttle nature of moving backwards and forwards between anyway to then introduce a vivarium that potentially has two three or four basking sites to allow for animals of different hierarchical statures to be able to bask and thermoregulate correctly we need to bear that in mind also, in the stress series that we've covered on YouTube, which I would encourage people to look at as it covers a lot of important subjects, social stress is a very, very real thing. And that is where we're going to have animals that are perpetually in a state of stress because an animal also in its enclosure acts as a stressor upon it. So take that alpha male. If he is stressing out, females around him he causes their metabolic rate to increase they now need to eat more food to maintain their muscle tone and body mass and considering these females are the ones that are going to produce the eggs and commit the stores to produce the next generation this is a seriously detrimental situation to be in which is why we have to be super attuned to what's going on with our animals and whether it's applicable to them or should we even attempt it in the first place when we have those situations and the animals are running their faster met metabolic rate it's also been proven that there is ulceration that takes place of the esophageal tract and of the, the stomach lining as well, which can upset the stomach and cause regurgitation. What this also does with the metabolic rate is cause animals to dehydrate far quicker. And we then have a problem where not only are they not basking correctly because the male won't let them, if they are eating, they now need to eat two and three times what they were eating before to be able to maintain the body weight and condition. And then also they may be dehydrating even though they're drinking the same amount. You see, hydration and drinking water aren't just the same thing when we talk about hydration we're talking about salts electrolytes and amino acids which are available in such as probiotic solutions as Reptaboost and others that are on the market and these things salts electrolytes and amino acids are lost through stress which causes the dehydration so we have a lot of things that we need to keep our eye on and variables that we must stay in control of if we're going to attempt something as as potentially serious, potentially problematic, not in all cases, granted, but the potential is there. To not mention it, to not talk about that elephant in the room is irresponsible. There is the potential for this to go epically wrong, to the point where we're talking about mortality or uh, the dismemberment of limbs which is commonplace in bearded dragons. And you need look no further than for the pictures of maimed and destroyed bearded dragons that litter the web, uh, the web because people have decided, well, it needs somebody to cuddle and love and be next to. 
And it's that sort of attitude, unfortunately, that apathy, that laziness, where there's a subject that's really serious and needs real consideration. People don't bother. And it's, oh yeah, well you can do it if you want. No, don't do it if, just if you want. Do it if you think that you can manage the situation. What is your contingency for if there is a problem? If antagonism becomes an issue and becomes a problem, do you have the means, the infrastructure of a, a backup tank, backup UV, backup thermostat, all the rest of it, to be able to split them? Part of the reason why these main beardies and everything else exists is because not only has that antagonism occurred, it has perpetually continued to occur because the keepers have not reacted to a situation that was problematic for their pet. In that case, it's disgusting. If somebody, such as a shop, such as a breeder we've got a network of vivariums if we try cohabitation and it fails we can separate them as a private keeper in the home if you do not have the infrastructure to be able to do this do not do it next multi-specific cohabitation where you're keeping different kinds of animals we've got to try and make sure that we respect the origin and biome that the animals are from and there has to be a compatibility there it doesn't stop there though we also need to look at the continent which the animal originated from and more specifically the country when kids go on holiday at school in this in the six weeks holiday they shoot off all over the world mum and dad have bought them holidays to go to Menorca to go to to Spain uh, to, to America to uh, South Africa to Abu Dhabi to Australia to New Zealand and when they come back and they all start the new term in September, everybody's got cold, everybody's sniffling, whatever. Why? Why is that? Because they have gone to countries where there are other pathogens and bacterias and diseases or strains of colds and flus that exist that we have got no marker for and it becomes a melting pot of bacteria and pathogens and everybody ends up with a cold and a chest infection. Exactly the same thing happens with reptiles, except what we're talking about is an animal that has bacteria, maybe internal parasites, maybe some sort of disease that they carry, they manage, they have the markers for, it's under control, my immunosuppression is active and working, and we introduce that to an animal from another region, they do not have these markers and therefore there is a real risk of catastrophic immuno failure. This has to be discussed. If you're going to do it, you need to be attuned to the condition and the weight of your animals and make sure that these things are going to work. Maybe have them um, occupying different areas within a tank. For example, green anolis, anolis carolinensis, and green tree frogs, hylocinerea. They can live together in theory because one will take on the flat planes, the glass and the side walls, the anolis tend to be on the leaves. And they, there, isn't, there isn't a huge issue. Or we're going to have a terrestrial species that then isn't going to compete with those arboreal species. These are examples of how you may be able to make it work, but even then it's still not guaranteed. And the bigger problem at hand is that the, a lot of the animals that are used for cohabitation experiments invariably are the cheaper wild caught imported animals that will also have these parasitic burdens that pose a risk to the other species in the tank realistically when you sit and think about it and it's explained to you it is common sense but it just seems that it's something that is severely lacking within this hobby nobody's trying to lecture you tell you you can't do it but if you're going to do it you're going to take some responsibility for it I, I commented on, on on something that, I, that i'd listened to the other day and and, and francis uh Kuskiri, who is a known cohabitation keeper also said there's more reasons to not cohabit than there is to cohabit. I cohabit, I experiment. Some things have been together for a couple of decades, but I guarantee if there was a issue that arose and it could be identified that the cohabitation was an issue, do you know what he'd do? He'd separate them. Why? Because he's got the means to do so. There are always going to be more reasons not to do it. Rather than just having a go and experiment and make the decision or decide, is this something that... I, I, I really believe in, I really want to do, I want to see if it works, I can react to issues if there are there, if it's just because I think it'll look cool and aesthetically it's going to look the nuts, that's not enough of a reason, I'm sorry, it's just not. Um, I hope that the video uh, has been useful, cohabitation is serious, it is something that needs taking seriously, if you're going to do it be careful, if you've had success, by all means share your successes in the comments, but understand that they are snapshots, they are not now definitives that those species mixers work, in isolation with those individuals and those individual personalities that you are working with, every animal is different, your mix worked. What it does not create is a definitive, it creates an example.
And it is unless that that process is repeated a thousand times and we know what the success and failure rate was, we can't comment on this mix works. This mix is fine. It's not fine. It worked that time. It doesn't mean it will work every time. And that is really important for people to bear in mind. I hope that was useful. We'll see you soon. We'll keep it coming with the educational videos. Peace. Oh, and before I forget, it was suggested that I swivel. See you soon, guys.